Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. I know a lot of people out there are excited about the upcoming MSI Claw A1M gaming handheld that'll be releasing in the next couple months. And I was lucky enough to go hands-on with it at CES recently. Did a video just kind of showing off what I could test so far. And through all of my time with the Claw, the highest end game we were able to run was Assassin's Creed Mirage, which did run really well. And one of the main claim to fame to the new MSI Claw is it's not going to be using a Ryzen APU. We've actually got the brand new Intel Core Ultra 7 155H, which does have 16 cores and 22 threads. Plus, we've got a brand new ARC-based iGPU, which actually performs really well at the correct wattages. Along with this, we've got a 53 watt hour battery, a 7 inch, 120 hertz display, and a really nice cooler boost hyperflow cooling system, which is going to keep that chip nice and chilly. One thing that was mentioned to me several times was, you know, we've got that 53 watt hour battery and in handheld mode, we can take the TDP up to 35 watts, which is going to give us the best performance we can get out of this handheld. They're saying that you can get two hours of gameplay at 35 watts. Now, realistically, doing the math there, it doesn't make sense given that we have a 53 watt hour battery, but that's what's been thrown around lately. And of course, when I say it doesn't make sense, I'm talking that we're kind of just at a steady 35 watts on that TDP throughout. Now, while gaming, you know, some games just aren't going to boost up that high. They just don't need to. But either way, that's what's been thrown out. And I think that's what we're going to be testing at today. Now, I don't have a claw handheld to test with, but I do have a laptop with the same exact chip that they're going to be using. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is MSI will have their own power profiles. So there is a chance at the same wattage we're going to be testing at today, we'll see better performance on the MSI Claw. Now this CPU actually has 16 cores and 22 threads. One thing that I'm thinking is, uh, you know, with the power profiles that MSI will have preloaded on this device, is they can park some of these cores because we really don't need 16 cores to run a lot of the games we're going to be playing on this handheld. And in turn, we can send more of that maximum of 35 watts over to the GPU. It's really where it's going to come down, those power profiles that MSI is specifically designing for this device. I believe Intel is right there with them, trying to get everything right. But overall, I've been doing a lot of testing on the Intel Core Ultra 7, and I really do like this chip. I believe we can get similar performance out of what we're going to be testing today that we're going to see on the MSI Claw. Now, of course, drivers will play a big part, and there's still some time for Intel to get those drivers right with this new iGPU. But for now, we can see what we can kind of expect, and it's actually really good. Before we jump into it, I wanted to give you a quick rundown on the specs of this new chip. So we've got the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. They're also going to be offering a lower end variant, but this is their highest end at the time of making this video for the MSI Claw. 16 cores, 22 threads, and with this we get 6 performance cores up to 4.8, 8 efficiency cores up to 3.8, and two low power efficiency cores up to 2.5. I think with some tweaking and tuning from MSI and Intel, they can really leverage these low power cores for uh, indie games. For instance, something like Shredder's Revenge would run just fine on those two very low power cores. You don't even need to go up to that 2.5, so we could get really great battery life out of those really easy to run games, but they need to kind of get the power profiles right. But my favorite thing about these new chips are the new integrated graphics. We've got an Intel Arc i GPU, and this will clock up the 2.25 gigahertz with the correct wattage. Now, even at 35 watts, with the way I have my little laptop set up, I can't reach those clocks. I do need to add more, but I'm going to be testing at 35 watts, and with this, we get 8XE cores. Very similar to something like the A350 dedicated GPU, but the power has been scaled back. Okay, so jumping right into it, as you can see, we've got the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. Main difference here is going to be the RAM amount. We've got 32 gigs here at 6400 megatransfers per second. The MSI Claw is going to have 16. There's no way that I can take this out. It is soldered to the board. But we've got the new GPU here, the new Arc iGPU. Okay, so taking a look across the board here, first thing I wanted to do is make sure we were at 35 watts. So uh, that 155H here, I'm just going to run a stress test with CPU-Z. You'll see this jump up 38, 33. We're right there at 35. Now I am using a third-party application to get this set at 35. And while gaming, we should have a pretty good lock there from 34 to 35. Another thing is, we'll run a load on this GPU, and you'll see it needs to split up that TDP between the new Intel Arc i GPU and the CPU. So as soon as I put a load on this, if we take a look, 
Still pretty new, so it's not giving me a GPU clock or anything like that. Our clocks on that CPU are going to come down. Now, throwing more wattage at it will allow us to keep the clocks up on the CPU and the GPU at the same time, but we're kind of limited here by battery. 35 watt TDP actually does a pretty decent job with this, but the way everything's set up right now, even at 35 watts, I can't reach those maximum clocks on the GPU. I've seen a maximum of around 1900 in some cases, but while gaming, we're more around 1500. Remember, this new iGPU will go over 2000 megahertz, but you do need more wattage. So hopefully Intel and MSI do come up with something to get us those higher clocks because it could definitely help out. Getting right into some game testing, we've got Forza Horizon 5, 1080p medium with XESS set to balance. If you're not familiar with XESS, this is Intel's scaling technology. Works out really well on these Intel Arc GPUs, be it dedicated or an iGPU. And in all of the press releases that I've seen for the MSI Claw, they're really stressing to use XESS to scale that image down or up, depending on what kind of resolution you're running at. But the Claw does have a 1080p 120Hz display and I wanted to run everything at 1080. So next up, we've got Doom Eternal 1080p Low. Now taking this to medium, we're right on the edge of 60. So a little bit of scaling or even taking this down to 900p would really help out. But with the way I have it set up right now, by the end of this run, I had an average of 76 FPS. And if you take a look at MSI Afterburner, you can see that our CPU package power, which is gonna be our TDP, it's right there at 35 watts and our GPU clocks aren't going over 2000. In order for them to go up that high, I do need to take the wattage up to around 45. I know it's an older one, but it's still one I personally like to play. We've got GTA 5, 1080p, normal, got an average of 112 FPS, more than playable. I mean, it looks really good here at 1080p. And of course you could fiddle with those settings a little bit. I just took it at normal. I think we could do a nice high normal mix with this one. This little chip actually handled Spider-Man Remastered pretty well. We're at 1080p low with XESS set to performance, and I do have VSync turned on, so we're trying to be locked at 60. I'd say dynamic XESS with, uh, you know, the FPS set at 60 would probably be the way to go. But to tell you the truth, the way the game feels right now, we're only dropping down to around 58 every once in a while. If I didn't have that frame counter on, I probably wouldn't be able to tell. Had to throw one of my all-time favorite games in here, Skyrim. This is the OG version, 1080p, high, locked at 60. And if you take a look at Afterburner, we don't need 35 watts to run it like this. And, you know, on these smaller screens, taking that resolution down, in my opinion, doesn't hurt too much. Since we've got a 16 by 9 display on the upcoming MSI Claw, going down 900p in most cases would really help out. Here's Ratchet & Clank, Rift Apart, 1080p, low, with XESS set to performance. This one is also trying really hard to be locked right there at 60, but unfortunately we're right under. Now I didn't go under 50 FPS with it, but in some cases you can see it dip down to around 51, 53. Not bad at all. I mean, it actually feels pretty decent the way it is. Would have been nice to have a nice steady lock 60 though. And the final game I wanted to test was Cyberpunk 2077. We are at 1080p low with XESS set to performance. And from low settings, what I do is take the preset to low and then go through and change everything to as low as it can go. I consider this the lowest setting. We're still at 1080 and I'm getting an average of around 51 FPS. Now I am on the latest beta driver for these ARC GPUs. And this has helped tremendously from the original release of the 155H. I did a video taking a look at one of the first laptops that launched with this chip, which was an MSI Prestige. GPU performance wasn't great. I actually had to take the uh, wattage way up to kind of get higher clocks to compensate for driver optimizations. But since then, I mean, we're seeing a nice bump in performance just with that new driver. And we still have time before the MSI Claw officially releases, so I'm sure we're gonna see a nice jump in performance there once that hits the shelves. But uh, until then, this is the kind of testing that I wanted to do. We've got the same exact chip, a little more RAM, but it's the same speed. And at 35 watts, it's not a bad performer. Given that Intel states that you can get around two hours of battery life out of it at 35 watts, I think the MSI Claw is definitely gonna be able to compete. And especially with all of the tweaking and tuning that MSI is gonna be doing with the power profiles. And of course, once I can get my hands on an MSI Claw, I'll have a bunch of videos. So uh, let me know what you wanna see running on that in the comments below. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Let me know your thoughts on the performance of this new Ultra 7 155H. Is this something that you'd consider picking up? Or are you going to wait for the next generation of iGPUs to hit the market? Let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.